bastard sermon, you motherfuckers. Welcome to another episode of the Bastard Sermon. I'm one of your three hosts, Cody Hucker. And Luke Young. Lloyd Johnson. The and is at a weird point. It is. I'm just so used to it, it felt weird. <laughs> You're so used to it. How many fucking episodes with Lloyd have we done now? Well, no, it's it's because the, uh, I was always third, so it was like Cody Hucker, Patrick Seda, and Luke Young. I mean, so you, that's why it's it's such a habit to be like Cody Hucker and Luke Young. It's like, but it's not just and. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like whenever uh, Lloyd's femur heals up, eventually he's going to be the one doing the podcast intro. He's just going to like... <laughs> You know, just like, oh, oh, Cody, hold on, fuck a second, and like stand up over me, like give me that real intimidating stare. You know the one. It's, you know the I one. I mean, that Lloyd I has. thought it was pretty clear here that L- Lloyd was gonna alpha male this entire <laughs> podcast as soon as he's back in like top condition. I don't know. I'm, I'm just having fun doing it, man. I, <laughs> For now, and then soon it's to gonna turn into over. an this empire. Is, this is one of those things where I'm not like trying to be like, oh, let me do it my fucking way, because yeah. I do a lot of that in my life. And uh, no, I just enjoy this shit. Pull that closer so. to your face, Wood. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you. We need to get him back on the. Uh, what are we doing? Not giving him the fucking so that he could do other things, other unpronounced things that we're not going to talk about on the podcast. <laughs> he's petting his cat right now, and uh, I love cats. Very distracted by his cat that he's petting. No, and, yeah, yeah. I'm just not like I said. I have, I have a bad problem. I like drifting off the side. So can, I'm, I'm getting used to up, these. We can hook up that other one. It's all good. I'll get you. It's easier for you. This one just gives me better audio like quality whenever I listen back to it. So I just feel like we should go for this. But listeners, if you go back to the first time that Lloyd came on the podcast, no one's gonna do this except for Mansfield, maybe, possibly. Go back, listen, see how you feel about that first episode with Lloyd. Not the first one, but the the first one three status where he's like, Yeah, I'll be the third mic if you guys want me to and we're like, Ha ha ha, maybe and then next thing you know he's the actual third mic. Go back and listen to that. If you like that audio quality or if you don't mind that audio quality We'll, we'll hook that fucking, you know, that fucking, the other mic back in, and we won't have to worry about that. But I feel like this is dramatically better audio quality, and everybody bitches whenever you don't have good audio quality, so yeah. Anyways. All right. No, I think I'll get used to it. It's all right. Sick. <clears throat> so what have you boys been up to this week? Getting re-obsessed with Viva La Bam. Why? <laughs> I, because it's such an <laughs> integral part of my stupid childhood, and it has so much nostalgia to it. Like, uh, I also do the shittiest Bam Margera impression ever for my girlfriend that pisses her off. Only because it pisses her off. Like, it'll shut down anything. We're about to fuck, and I can't help myself. Like, it I just, just dries like, that shit up. Yeah, I'm coming in. I'm about to stick my dick inside of Chrissy. She's going to fucking shit her ass. <laughs> She's a fucking idiot. <laughs> she's gonna fucking shit her ass. Yeah, she's a fucking jerk, dude. <laughs> These fucking jerk ass kids. You just and, and I then just do that all soon, night long. She's like, it's the worst band march here, and I was like, it's flawless, knowing soon, that it's imperfect. But I, I just tell her it's flawless. And then I found fucking you know where you would type in like the uh, uh, anybody that doesn't know if you just type in anything that you want to watch that you can't find anywhere else or you don't want to pay for, type in one two three movies if you have a computer, and there'll be a thousand like virus links that you can get and yep. like. Good luck. Hope that you don't have your credit card information saved to your computer. Use it on a burner computer, a burner laptop or some shit like that. Your cell phone. And you can find anything you want. I found all of Evil <coughs> Bam. Watched the whole fucking first season. Just did the most horrific so Bam impressions the whole time. Just like, yeah, we're making fucking You're going to turn casino. into it. You're going to start like running into yeah. your bedroom and like, my head beating back the bug. Like You're going to start beating up Chrissy like like Bam does like to, 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 to Phil and and like <laughs> Vito. No, he's, he's You're just going to run in and start smacking the fuck out. He's going to start doing to his 91-year-old grandpa when he's out cutting the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> this is my grandpa. I'm going to fuck him up. He's going to shit his ass. I just broke into fucking... I just broke into grandpa's room. He's in here sleeping. He's fucking 91 years old. And I just put tacks and dog shit in his shoes. Grandpa, wake up! And he has a heart attack right before he even gets to put his shoes in the dog shit <laughs> and tacks. <laughs> and I'm just like, you can believe he's having a fucking heart attack, yo. Yo, you guys getting this? And I'm talking to invisible cameras that aren't there. I'll bleed schizophrenia. It'll be fine. Dude, yeah, I, I used to love that show. I watched that show religiously, and then I watched uh, the sequel series religiously, Bam's Unholy Union. Yeah. Did you watch that, too? Of course. Watch all of it, yeah. And then, then just to find out, like, just a few short years later, they get a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> they all who, did. Who would have guessed? Bam's yeah. girlfriends are all on that thing. It's almost like the, the girlfriends of this right. podcast that I've brought on constantly. <laughs> 
it's like Cody Cody dates you for two days. You're coming on the podcast. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, Lloyd and Chrissy should start a podcast. We've been dating for four months. <laughs> This will work no, out we, forever. We st- me and her start. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This, it is. Me and, me and her. I start- actually love this girl, but for funny. <laughs> me and her start a podcast, and it's like it takes off. Like, do- doing like way way better. Then you guys break up. And you have that cool moment where you're walking in to record after she's leaving from recording. <laughs> it's like ten years later. Cody's like some assistant at a studio, and she's like being walked in by her assistant. Like this is the topics for today, and they like they lock eyes, but not a word is said. She just <laughs> the, 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 next, for for like a year. The fucking first ten minutes of the bastard sermon is Cody being sad. Like I was, yeah, mm-hmm. had this girl that I liked a lot, and I've made a couple jokes. <laughs> We had a couple jokes that I thought were funny, but she didn't. And I'm very happy for her now. She has a great podcast with with Lloyd. Uh, what a sad. Like, you just hear meat slapping future. on the table. That's Lloyd literally pulling his dick out and showing it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Still wet, bro. <laughs> you want to smell it? You know, you know what the smell. What it smells like? You remember? Good <laughs> Lord. <laughs> it's pronounced Lloyd. <laughs> Wait, what did he say? I didn't hear it. He said, oh, Lord. I said, it's pronounced Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing that since I was 12, and I'm just not, I'm just not stopping ever. I think you've yeah. done that on the podcast before. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even realize. Like, Lily will get me after a minute because I, I did it like <clears throat> at like a family thing, and one of my like one of my aunts or whatever was talking. I was, she said, oh, and just, oh, Lord. And I was like, it's pronounced Lloyd. <laughs> and Lily just looks at me like, why now? Like, kind of, why now? Why are you doing this? Who's your audience? Like. Tilt this up, Tilt dude. This I'll up be. I'll I'll fucking say that cheesy uh, line. Uh, time for you to get a watch until someone shoots me. I'm gonna say that until I'm dead, bro. You on that point? You know, you posted something on Facebook that I haven't been able to stop thinking about. Yeah. About um, it was like I'd rather. Am I the only person that would rather oh, kill myself yeah. than repeat myself? And I felt that in the depths of my soul because my grandfather that I live with. My fault. I should have nothing but empathy for him. I'll leave with this. I should have nothing but empathy. I shouldn't be bitching about this. Any criticism that you both have is absolutely correct about this. So I know the angle of like, yeah, don't live with your grandfather. Yeah, I get that, but I do. So I have bitching complaints about a 91-year-old man that literally needs me to... Re- it's like I'm living Groundhog's Day, but it doesn't restart after 24 hours. Every fucking eight minutes, I've got to repeat my plans for a new job. Like a, a new fucking... Uh, are you getting a new job? What's going on? And I was like, I'm, I'm fucking working on it. Uh, are you getting a new job? What's going on? And I was like, I just told you I'm working on it. And it was like, you getting a new job? And I was just like, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to either kill you or myself or both of us. Yeah. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. Just here, get but- a whiteboard and write out the answer and then just hold it up. <laughs> Yeah, but then you have to put glasses on and adjust them. Well, and that's what I'm saying. Then it's on him. It's it's so infuriating because he has he just got like ten thousand dollar fucking like earbuds that they that the fucking government paid for because he was in the air force or whatever yeah. ruined his ears sitting on those. Uh, he was the uh, the first years that the air force was the air force. <coughs> my grandfather was in the air force and he fucking uh, sat by the big uh, yeah. in the air air force mechanic and shit like that the entire time just ruining his ears. And he flew over across Europe, you know, delivering supplies and fucking French women. Whoa, and shit like really? That. Yeah, he was that dude. He was flying re- the planes, dropping the like, like he the wasn't supplies flying them. He couldn't. He didn't ever get his uh, pilot's license because he had a dickhead instructor that he was gonna get a pilot's license so that when he retired he could get a commercial license and shit like that. And just never ended up doing that because the guy was such a dick. And my uh, the woman that he ended up marrying wasn't into flying like that. So he got a different job doing something else. But he did. He, he was one of the guys that helped refurbish all of Europe, essentially. And just sitting next to those big airplane engines, he didn't ever see war during the Korean War because he was fixing Europe from World War II. But he just all day fucking long, nonstop, constantly just ruined his ears. But now they have the most sophisticated possible technology to fix that shit and he has that in his ears and they give him his iPhone that he doesn't know how to use at all because it's not one of those big ass remotes that's the size of a tablet with eight buttons on it that are fucking the size of fucking (laughs) like a dice that he can click in and he can feel touch no the haptic feedback isn't enough for him so he can't figure out the app so like he has all this shit all set up all fucked up so I set it all good for him and then like whenever he listens to it he's so used to being deaf for the last 40 years that like he's like everything's just so loud I can't even deal with it and I'm just like please deal with it because every time that you don't have these fucking headphones or 
every time that he even does have the motherfuckers in, he's got the volume so low that he can't, he might as well not have them in. So I'm repeating myself seven, eight fucking times every single time. And it's, it's goddamn infuriating. It's the worst fucking thing ever. Like, what's your experience with this that made you post that? Oh, um, so like, I'm, pr I'm convinced now that anyone in my immediate intimate life just does not listen to anything I say. Uh, <laughs> Cause like whether it be my family or my girlfriend, I have to tell them everything twice, and it's not even just like I just said something, and they're like, "Huh?" It's definitely that too. That makes me want to put a gun in my mouth alone. Where it's like, "Hey, I'm gonna go over here and do this," and like, "Excuse me." Right away, I want to kill myself. Like I don't, I don't want to take the two seconds to re to say the five words that I just did. I'd rather die. Imagine living then, with it every day. And then like, uh, like. Like you, like I just, we just talked about this off mic. I had told Liz, like, uh, you know, uh, Lloyd's going to be, we're thinking about Lloyd's going to be our new host. And then like the next day it was confirmed and I told her and I'm like, I'm excited for this. You know, the first episode with him, having him as a guest again, you know, and then we talked about it, it was really good. I'm excited for it. And then like, I tell her. Hey, I'm going to go record with Lloyd Friday. Do you want to come? And she goes, why are you recording with Lloyd? I'm like, he's the new host. And she goes, you told me that? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, what What happened? Like, what? when did, was that decided? I was like, I. there's no way I'm telling you the full story again. Bro. I already did. I uh, Seriously, I'd rather die or kill somebody in front of you <laughs> than have to retell this the story. The story that you're telling me right now is like you took a Scooby-Doo mask off your girlfriend and it was like, let's see what's under here, gang. And, and it, it was Chrissy. It's, no, it's my... No, it's okay. my grandpa. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, Chrissy's fantastic with this. She remembers shit and I forget everything. <laughs> I'm getting terrible at it, by the way. I'm forgetting all kinds of shit and I'm bitching about all the things that somebody else is going to be bitching like all the time but because it's me and i care about myself more than i care about anybody to me it's the biggest inconvenience in the entire world i gotta yeah. repeat myself to somebody it's lived almost a century on yeah. this earth now here's my and provides mine, me shelter mine is like very self-imposed because i mumble like i if i don't care a lot about what i'm saying there's a good chance i'm gonna i'm just gonna yeah. mumble it and then someone's like what and i'm like fuck and then I'll stare at them as if they're inconveniencing me for me mumbling. <laughs> oh, I'm, sure, I'm sure I've been in that same position. Yeah, and I, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just mad that it's happening. So I know, like, my face is, it's pretty, it, you usually can tell what I'm thinking by my face. I don't do a whole lot of uh, masking anything. So if I'm annoyed, you know I'm annoyed. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times I'll be annoyed about something I did, but, you know, have somebody standing next to me who's like, why is he so fucking mad at me? Yeah, wiping like, sweat off their brow. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm not mad at you. I'm just mad. And they're like, well, wh about Equally what? Equally terrifying, regardless. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I, I, I've gotten so like so bad at work, whereas, like I said, I, I know that I do it. I know all the time. And I know that, especially one of the people that I'm calls. Sorry, could you repeat that? <laughs> I'm looking for something to throw. <laughs> <laughs> that big bottle of rum. <sighs> Google Pixel. <laughs> Wait, I thought you gave that to T-Bone. He didn't take it. All right, keep going, though. That worked, uh, though. No, there's one person that calls, and every time on the phone, it's... I know I have to, like, speak super loud to this person and whatever, and they every time they ask, like, what? I'm sorry, I didn't. I, like, I'll sit there, and, like, up by the end of it, I'm gripping the desk to where my hands are turning white, and, like, the people I work with are like, oh, fuck. Like... <laughs> Is he going to blow up again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is he going to start acting like an asshole to everybody because he won't talk loud? <laughs> What are you saying again? Has this happened before? Oh, yeah. Can you please... Are you able to share? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'll get just fucking irritated with something, and then one thing will go wrong. Do you remember a specific story, though? Um, yeah, I was, I was real irritated with... All right, I was a dick. <laughs> but... God, I'm trying to think of where to start. To, all right, so there's somebody who called one time, and she was like, I swear you guys just bring us the wrong stuff on purpose. <gasps> and I went, well, now I do. Yeah. For sure, now I do, because I drove down there to drop something off. I set it on the counter in front of her like this, and she goes, that's not at all what I asked for. I went, oh, okay, well, I got some other things to deliver. I'll come back and grab it in a little while. And then I brought back something way different again, not even close. Dropped it off like, is this? Petrified is this, mummy's is ball? This the, is this the thing you wanted? And she's like, no. I, I went to Apple and Oat Treats that, for the – like, I don't know how you got this wrong again. I'm like – just something we do, and I, you know, can't, I, it was probably like four times, and then finally I was like, I'm gonna end up in human resources. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, she called my old boss. My old boss called, and she just kept repeating herself, 
And I'm like, yep, I understand. Okay. Yep. You already said that. Okay. Yep. And as I'm going, like, I, I'm like. White knuckling it. Yeah. And then I get off and uh, I get off the phone with her and a truck driver backs up to the dock and he backed up kind of crooked. And he's like, well, can't you just get a thing and pull the skids forward? And, stuff? and I was just like, dude, fucking do your fucking job. Like losing my mind, screaming yeah. at this grown ass man, like just get in the fucking truck and back it up correctly. It's like, it's not that fucking hard. You don't have to do shit other than back up to a dock. That's it. That's the whole list of what I need you to fucking do. Did you go to a point where you were offering to get in the truck and back it up for him? No. <laughs> That's but the next level of asshole. I, That's it, where I would have got to with no truck no, experience. I, and I'm much worship. more the guy who's like, I will put you back in the truck to do it again. <laughs> like, I'm not going to do it for He's you. He's going to undertake your choke slam him into the truck. Right. Like, I'll make sure, I will make sure there. one way or another you get back up. in that truck to do it. Yeah. <clears throat> That's much more my, I don't, I don't do the, let me do it for you. No, I'm a, you're going to do it right. You might do it right with a broken leg, but you're doing it right. Like, yeah. So, but yeah, I remember blowing up at him and they came out like, like, dude, he's, he's brand new. He, he doesn't know. I was like, well, he fucking does now. Fuck that guy. Like, <laughs> and everybody around me is like, all right, we just got to let him be mad for a little while, I guess. Y'all, uh, y'all ever like catch people mad on the road and just help stoke that fire? No, I am that person that's mad on the road. I, uh, I'm too busy being the person that's ready to pull my car in front of somebody else's car and kill that person to like get other people that level of angry because you don't know what people are capable of. I said, I'm the guy who's like, I've followed people to their destination like six times in my life. Yeah. Like one of them to being... To scare them like that? No, because he was thinking about killing them. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. There's, one, there, by there's the one I literally drove from like the bottom of Coleraine all the way to fucking Westchester when I was literally going... Like, I passed where I was going three minutes into the drive and drove for another 20. Yeah. Just on pure hate alone. Yeah. And get out and just start losing my fucking mind on this guy because he cut me off and then cut someone else off. And then he sticks his finger out the sunroof and then he threw something like a cup or something out. And I'm like, nope. Oh, yeah. No. You're going to die today, bro. Way. I have so many good stories that I, uh, statute of limitations. I was, I was on uh, the highway and uh, it, it got cut down to a two lane uh, road, right? And I'm on the fast lane, and there's this cocksucker behind me that's speeding up, like, 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 way, like, visibly speeding up on the highway. You know, he's going way too fast. Dude's going like 95 miles an hour. So I start gunning it so I can catch up to this car in the slow rain, uh, lane up farther and to the right. And I gun it up, and I'm just blocking this dude on purpose. He's like blowing the horn to get past me, but I'm like neck and neck with the guy in the slow Bro, lane. I literally, no way I'll drive around. slower just to be neck and neck with dude yeah. that's acting like an asshole. Exactly what and, you're talking about. And he's waving his hands around, and I'm just like, ooh, like, like doing like the wave with <laughs> the my arms, arm. like spaghetti shit, like, ooh, what are you <laughs> I will say one of the one of the few times in my life that my brother was like just on the same page and actually was cool was just dumb luck me and him were both driving down the highway and I saw his car like as I passed him in one lane and then this dude like gets in front of him and slows down and then he tries to cut over in the lane that I'm at to the point where I had to slow down. So I zip around in front of him and my brother just pulls his car right up next to mine and we start driving like thirty on the highway. <laughs> Didn't, didn't he, like, I mean, we just looked at each other and both of us just knew, like, and this dude's, like, cutting back and forth behind either of our cars, honking on his horn, blah, 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 And then I just I slowed down a little bit, and as Mark's car started to head forward, the guy got behind him, and so Mark slowed down a little bit. And then I'd speed up. Just, <laughs> <laughs> you have a convoy of dickheads that are on your side knowing it, what's up. It was just literally you me and Mark. have a CV radio going back and forth. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was just, breaker, breaker, this is asshole one. Yeah, this is asshole two, check. Yeah, this asshole's trying to come up on me. Go ahead and slow down whenever he gets into your lane. Okay, check. And like I said, it wasn't like it was planned Same or anything. Forward. It wasn't like we were even going the same fucking place. It just happened to be that we both saw what was happening. And as soon as he pulled up next to me, we just kind of looked at each other. That is magical. And I was just like, he's, we, all right, he'll be the same kind of dick I'm about to be. <laughs> That's a moment of magic for me in my road rage because whenever somebody, like, whenever I, especially when I'm doing 15 to 20 over and yeah. some asshole is, like, yeah. just directly behind me and I'm like, I'm doing 15 to 20 over. I respect you want to get to your destination a little bit faster, but you're doing it the complete wrong way. If I saw you give a reasonable amount of space and stay with me for long enough, I'd be like, all right, driving <coughs> too slow for him. Yeah. And I would get over, and I would let him over, and then I'd go back to going 15, 20 over. But if you get right on my shit, 
I'm like, I'll cause an accident that might cause both of us our lives just on principle. Just on, fuck you, you're a fucking cunt. And at that point, I don't even slow down. I don't brake check people because fuck that and yeah. dash cams. But I just let off the gas completely and just sit there and let my car just slowly just get into that. And as yeah. soon as they get over in the other lane to go fucking get around me and they see the, like, they just see, like, a, a little bit of gap. I give them just a little bit of gap. Like, huh, my car might be able to fit. Nope, fuck you, suck a dick. And then I get right next to the other car and I look like I'm about to pass him. He comes back over and then I let off the gas again. And I'll do that the entire desk. I'll be 20 minutes late to work doing dumb shit like that. I'm already late to work and I'll fucking, I'll do shit like that just to piss people off. To piss me off. Because I just like, whatever the, I guess it's the disconnect from being there with people. But I, I don't know. If somebody was acting like that to me in real life, I don't feel like I would have any problem fucking telling them what a prick they were. So it's not like some like big balls, like I'm, surrounded by steel on the road no half the time got the windows down and i'm threatening them to fucking fight me and pull over and all this crazy shit that i don't even know why i'm doing it and like right I, I think about it later and i'm just like you have kids and like shit that you care about and like you don't want to go to jail do you like i don't you'd probably be maybe fine in jail but i don't know but like I, <clears throat> you're shaking your head very extravagantly no like you would be so well off in prison i would no. do terrible i, I would think, i'd I be I, i'd die in jail I wouldn't enjoy it, would just, it. I would hate it. It would, just, it would be only a matter of time until, like, I just, I don't, somebody like, get not go over there right now. I'm like, no. You, right. The way you said that, I'm not doing it. Yeah. Well, you know, we're going to beat the shit out of you for this. I'm like, I think you really overestimate the value that I have on my own life. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I remember, all right, so talking about weird road rage stories, um, my ex-wife and I went to a haunted house with some of her friends, and this guy, like, peels out of the fucking parking lot and is, like, lifted truck. And, I mean, he was being a drunk shithead. It's that big one up there where there's, like, five different haunted houses and a trail yeah. and all that shit, whatever. And he was a drunken shithead the whole time. And then we see him getting in his truck in a parking lot, and he, uh, he like, peels out and shoots gravel all over a bunch of cars and shit. Yeah. <clears throat> Just being a douche. And then as we're leaving out, I see that his tire went flat. Good. So I was driving. And I pulled up in front of him, pulled off the road, and I just started offering advice to the point where, like, M Megan was yelling at me, like, this dude's going to fucking shoot you. He's going <laughs> to fucking kill you. Like, I'm literally standing out beside my car, like, hey, man, uh, you know, if you didn't have all this thing, you could just use a regular jack, but now you're going to, you probably have to call AAA or something. You know, if you just call them and, like, set up a thing right now, they'll, they'll still come. <laughs> as long as you pay that first premium thing, like, they'll still come even right now. And the dude's like... I mean, cussing, spitting, losing his fucking mind, mad, yeah. but also looking at, looking ahead at me, and I'm so calmly just like fucking with him. Yeah, that I could tell he's like, all right, I'm not gonna. But I do remember her like when we got home. She's like, "Do you do, do you do that kind of shit often?" And I was like, "Not often." She's like, "That's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen a human <laughs> being do." She's like, "I was so fucking embarrassed <laughs> sitting in that car." What? <laughs> What? I was, <laughs> I was, I was, she didn't see that that guy totally deserved it. Yeah, but that doesn't it was, matter sometimes. It was it's the ridiculous, like I said, I pulled one, it's, you know, whatever time at night and I got to work at six o'clock in the morning. It's like 11 right. o'clock and, you know, we're a half hour from home. I still pull off and waste 20 minutes fucking with this dude and just almost like begging him like go ahead right. say, do do something like hey you, man do you have a super jack in that big old truck of yours yeah like you know if you didn't have those big tires and stuff i bet you like i got a jack you can stack my jack on your jack do you think that'll work <laughs> like just being <laughs> like utterly ridiculous trying to just offer advice like i'm being nice <laughs> and you can tell he he hates every second of it but I never stopped sounding super nice. Yeah. The whole time I was talking to him. So he can't really appropriately get mad at you. <laughs> but kindly fuck off. <laughs> yeah, like, like, <laughs> you could tell he hated me, but not enough. Like he didn't have the balls to do anything. Yeah. Which I think might go hand in hand with the truck. But he just like he was so fucking mad by the time I finally pulled off. I was like, all right, man. Like uh, you know, just uh, be careful out there. Like. <laughs> Watch them, uh, you know, grab a lot, man. They can fuck your tires up. <laughs> like, but it was a good, like, 15, 20 minutes of literally, like, and, and I, every time I look in the car, Megan's just staring out the window at me like, 
people. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and I, let none of it bother me or deter me at all. Yeah. I'm just sitting here offering, like like I said, you know, if you call AAA, man, even if you just pay the premium today, they'll come out. They'll come out now. <laughs> <laughs> Were you getting weak inside your mind? Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Of it? Dude, I, was, I, I fucking laughed the entire drive home. Like, I was laughing to myself. Just at your, at your own stupid jokes? <laughs> like, that's why yeah. she didn't even bring it up till we actually got in the house. Like, what? What were you doing? Like, what do you do? You do this all the time? Like, <laughs> only when they, it presents itself. Yeah, I was like, well, I mean, I want that guy be a cop. I don't sucker. do it often, but it just felt right, so I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's God, so fantastic! Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I've done so many dumb things on the road, but I'm, I'm not so good at the at, at what you're talking about, where you can just be like, where you know that you're. I can do something inside my head where I'm just like, this would be hilarious if you could just keep your face together <laughs> and sell it, but I have no acting in me at all, so I can't sell it. I'll crack. I'll crack immediately. Like, do it yeah. in the kitchen sometimes. Like, there was this dishwasher that always wanted to get out of the kitchen early, and he would always ask every single time, like, hey, are we closing at 8? we closing at 9 or whatever? Because there was different close times for the days, and I was just like, I would sell it at first, where, and I would kind of hot potato it off and have to turn around before i lost my shit and it was just like actually today's the long close right so we got to pull out everything and this won't really affect you except until we get to the ceiling tiles because you see all the gunk on the ceiling tiles we're gonna have to pull this down because we're getting a health inspection and uh you're gonna have to sweep out all these ceiling tiles i'll help you uh get them back up but you're gonna have to take them back down but we're gonna be busy with all this and i mean you'll get out of here you know 130 or whatever we're gonna pay you you're gonna get your overtime and then like i start cracking apart and i turn around then like i look at my boss and like wink at him and he's just like and then dude's looking at him like is he fucking for real and he's just like i mean he's your closing manager he just told you that he needs you to pull the closing why are you looking at me and he's like well you're the you're the boss and he was like no he's your boss at nighttime so he's telling you you're gonna have to pull these ceiling tiles down and then he's like right cody and then i was just like and then it, like, just lose, I fall apart and he's like dude I fucking sold it for you like you started it I didn't even care to do this it was funny once you did it and then you lost it he was like fuck you Cody now you have to pull the ceiling tiles down yeah. and he's like and I am your boss so you're gonna pull those down and I was like ah fuck he didn't mean it but I can do it if it's fueled by hate <laughs> like, oh yeah like you know what I mean like that's the only supplement time supplement murderous say. rage for like <clears throat> like I, I look back on like especially some of the stories I've been telling like on here like it dawned on me after I told that story of spitting in a guy's mouth, like how utterly ridiculous <laughs> that, that, that behavior amazing. is. That's a great story. At the time, like I remember even correct. like when I was telling people about the story, I, I guess in my head I can remember how mad I was. So it still kind of made sense. When I was telling here, like after I got done, I was like, that really is like so fucking ridiculous of a thing to do. And then I named the episode that so that everybody <laughs> sees it. You're like, fuck. Well, no, no, no. It's fine. Like I did it, whatever. But... <clears throat> Like, when I get that far away from some of the ridiculous shit I've done, like, I, when I go tell the story, I almost feel like I'm telling a lie. Because, like, I don't... I get like that all the time. I don't remember, Sorry. like, why, why I was so worked up in the moment or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, I remember doing that, but I can't explain... Like, I can't give you a good reason why I took it that far. Do you ever do that thing with that on that note where you're just, like, you're trying to find corroborating witnesses? Like, it, before somebody says, like, this is bullshit, you almost, in your heart, you're like... The story isn't bullshit, but if, like as you're saying, it's you're so like, fantastical. You're like someone like I need a witness for someone to back like, this. Story I remember up. my dad pulled four of his own fucking teeth out, <clears throat> and it was I literally thought he had killed his girlfriend. Like I walked in the door, and the fucking there was a bath towel laying on the fucking coffee table, covered in blood. Oh, He's got blood all over his hands, up his arms, smeared on his fucking face, and just passed out on a couch. And you're like, I'll get the lie and the concrete. <clears throat> and I was like, fuck. Like I walked in, like what the fuck. And then I find out it was just he just pulled out four of his own teeth. But I remember one of my friends came over when I was... Your dad is fed smoker? No. What? Hold on a second. Wait, You're just, done, buddy. You're done. <laughs> You're done, Chomo. Come on now. The great part is I'd set everything up for him at Northside Dental Clinic, so all he had to do was drive there. Yeah. <laughs> too much. Too much. And he ask. decided instead to grab a pair of lineman pliers and a metal divider, which is a machinist tool to carve little lines in heated metal. Yeah. And pried his teeth up and then pulled them out. A little <laughs> solar cane for the Dude, pain. Yeah, I've got. No, a, he just drank two bottles of wild turkey. I've got a friend who uh, uh, who is sort of homeless. Um, sort of homeless doesn't. Hold on a second. You gotta <laughs> qualify okay, sort of well, homeless was, before you tell the rest of the story. He was living in a car uh, outside of the job he worked at, and then he lived in his car outside of his aunt's house, and now he's living inside of the house. Okay, I guess it is sort of homeless. All right, I'm with you. <laughs> 
So anyways, you have the buddy that's sort of so homeless. So he, 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 he's obviously got, like, weird health standards and, like, <laughs> like I shouldn't, no, be, spending, does, no I shouldn't be spending money <laughs> on things like this, right? And we, we both have this friend who's got uh, a tooth problem, his back left tooth. It's like his molar or something is killing him. He needs to get that shit removed. And uh, he's like, just get, just get some, some pliers. Like, I did that to my tooth, like, a, few, a couple months ago. I'm like... No, that's not like that, that. This isn't like just get some super glue and duct tape the cut type of like situation. You don't just plier your teeth out, man. Like you got to get that stuff looked at. That just makes me feel like, am I sort of homeless? <laughs> <laughs> you know how many times? You know how many times in my life like I've needed stitches and I just super glued the shit closed. Oh no, this is a or, different thing. You're talking about inside. You're talking about internal injuries at that point. Yeah, yeah. super like, gluing cuts in your hands. That's a normal thing. Like yes, yeah. especially Whereas as a fighter. In your mouth is very like, normal. Sure, I can stick in some pliers and yank it out, but like it's probably horrifically infected. And will I find out in time? Definitely not. Yeah, and you can't see inside your mouth. The, the the thing that you're talking about, Lloyd, it makes complete sense to me because I. I'm not like a super glue you cut together. I'm a fucking puss every single time that I see enough blood. I'm just like, am I going to die? It's just a stream of little tiny blood coming down me. And I've just immediately every everything that I talk shit on this podcast, trying to pretend like I'm some hard individual that I'm at, not actually comes out of it. It's just like, I'm going to fucking, am I losing too much blood? I'm asking everybody around me and they're like, shut the fuck up, you fucking pussy. Like, I, 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 like dude, it your, was a pimple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dude, even shit like that makes me want to vomit. Dude. People are like, I love following Dr. Pimple Popper. I'm like, oh, that shit makes me want to vomit. That shit doesn't die. bother me. A lot of my own blood also doesn't really bother me. I'm playing that up for the podcast, but other people, like watching other people bleed out horrifically or watching like videos of people bleeding out horrifically, that shit bothers me. The pussy, pimply stuff, throwing up, none of that shit, none of that stuff like bothers me, but... Yeah, surgery stuff, no thanks. Not into it. Don't have the stomach yeah, for no that. No way. But like the the super glue and cuts and stuff like that. I did that to my brother. Did I ever tell that story on the podcast? No. Where I was like, uh, it was the I got my ass beat so hard for this. So <laughs> we would always do. I was obsessed with like WWE shit and like oh, like I was saying earlier, the super moves on each other. No, not on each other. On him because he was my <laughs> little brother. <laughs> And I was always going to win this fight. And I let him do something. It would kind of hurt a little bit. I would do yeah. horrific shit to him that, like, he would fuck him up. He's, like, eight years old. And I'm, like, I don't know. What's our age difference? Like, three years. So I'm, like, fucking 11. And uh, just, like, fuck him up. And there was one where I was just, like, and now the finisher. And I grabbed a laundry basket. It was this big, tall, fucking blue laundry basket by Yay Big. Went down all the way to his ankles. Threw that over him. And then I, I look around to see what I could hit him with. And it was like, oh, there's a there's a horse, like one of the horses that one of my little sisters, that just like a stick with a pony head on the top. And I was like, ah, oh, this won't hurt him. Didn't think about the fucking inside the laundry basket. For whatever reason, there's like uh, two, like, uh, not sharp, but... <clears throat> like, like fins. Yeah, fins on the inside. Yeah, perfect word. On both sides. And I mashed his head in like three times, and he <laughs> fell back and landed on the back of his head. I took it, he's like, ah! He's crying. I'm like, stop being a fucking pussy, Jacob. And I take it off, and he is bleeding down his face. And I'm just like, oh, dude. And I'm thinking, like, I'm fucked. You're fucked. We're going to the hospital. Oh, God. But outside, I was just like, you're fine, dude. Stop being a pussy. Come on. Let's get a little water in it. The water will clot the thing. Because I heard that some. I don't know where I heard it. Put the water immediately. More blood. And it's just, he's like, ah! ah! Soaking his white fucking his beater shirt. And I was just like, all right, Jacob. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be cool. And I was like, uh, uh, Band-Aid. And I put Band-Aids over wet shit. And it's, like, falling off. And I was just like, what else? What else? And I was like, let me dry it. Let me dry it. And it's just, like, leaking. You can just see, like, blood like not spurting but just like that thing Pouring where it just kind of like it kind of just like bloop and it comes over the top and falls out of it but i'm wiping it up and i was like super glue and i super glue it but it's in his hair so it super glues his hair and his You're head a fucking maniac and i was like all right now it's cool and it's still bleeding and there's super glue and he's like it's burning and i was like stop being a pussy nobody will know anything he's like i gotta tell our parents and i was like you don't and you i just combed his hair in front toy of it story <laughs> <laughs> except with human beings instead of fucking toys yeah Shit like that. Where oh it was my just like, god! Man. Yeah, this made sense to me in my head, but I'd seen other people super glue their shit That's back so together. That's so funny. Like you know, real men like Lloyd and shit like that. Where they, it's so funny. Oh yeah, I've got this gash. I don't want to go get fucking stitches. Tell a story. You've got one. Well, That's so funny. Like, you took it that far. Right. I, I would have gotten too scared and folded. Like we need to tell someone. Like there's a lot of blood. Like I don't care if I, I get knew in the ass like, whooping coming at me, and I didn't. I was like, fuck it, dude. No, I'm just yeah. gonna have to suffer, dude. All right. So if you look right here on my hand, there's. 
like a little V-shaped scar, yep. and then there's a little line right beside it. That's where he... Uh... Um, I cut my hand open. I was putting some shelves up, and I had a razor knife, and I was like trimming a piece off of it, and it went right into my hand. Ooh. And then Were you I doing tried... the thing where you're trimming towards yourself? Like no, you... I just... The, way the, the whole oh, yeah. bottom of the shelf thing broke. Like, God damn. And it just went right into my... I mean, I literally buried the fucking... Ooh, no. <laughs> and I pull it out, and it's, you know, spurt, 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 blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you hit a vein or something. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so I tried to super glue, and it wouldn't stay. So I took a little piece of aluminum, <clears throat> like a flashing thing that I had in my toolbox, and I heated it up on the burner on the stove, and I tried to burn it closed, but when I first touched it, I was like, ah, and jumped, and that's what the straight line is from, as I just burnt a little line. And then I burnt that closed, and it was fine. And Are you uh, telling me <clears throat> you just cauterized a wound shut because you could? Yeah. You're a savage. I, <laughs> You're amazing. I, I, I just, I don't, I don't want to go to the hospital and get stitches, and it did, didn't look that big, but uh, I couldn't get it to stay closed with a super glue. Yeah. And then when I first tried to, like, do it, I flinched, and so I have, like, an extra little line there where I just added to because burning it. God damn. That sounds Is that crazy. lightning out there? Yeah. I didn't even I know think, there was a storm. In broad daylight, that's happening. Uh, I never, so when I was younger, the blood thing didn't freak me out. I, it's like a new thing for me. I don't know what it is, but uh, I used to, I've told a million times, my uh, Uncle Scott used to let us party over at his place and uh, shit like that. And uh, we used to always go over there or whatever. So Scott worked construction, concrete work, like machining a little bit. He wasn't good at it, so he got kicked out of there super fast. Uh, uh, two probably Lloyd I don't know confirm but uh yeah two he told me to but uh yeah so we were doing this uh what was it? oh yeah he came home one day and it was we he, I would always like I would basically manipulate my uncle into having me have like parties at his house or whatever because he was just like lonely fucking 40 year old virgin that just couldn't fucking get pussy ever so like having these girls that we would bring over he could awkwardly hit on and like years later i'm just like i put so many girls in danger by bringing them over but i was 16 so i'm like i don't feel that bad because i was trying to get drunk but i feel kind of bad that i was basically letting them around a predator like he never got accused of anything or he went to jail for letting kids drink at his house and shit like that but that's besides the point fucking so we're sitting there hanging out and he had just got back from some, I don't remember, he was doing some job, and something happened where he had metal shards in his hand, where it wasn't anything new, but he was like, here's the one, and he's like, you see all the, and he holds his palm up, and he's got these big fucking giant mitts of hands, he's big six foot four fucking, he used to be 400 pounds at this point, probably 300, he lost a lot of weight since then. Are and you talking about Jake? No, Scott, my oh, uncle okay, Scott. Okay. No, not Jake. Dick never been that big. You know Jake, the fuck? <laughs> no, no, but Scott, uh, yeah, big giant mitts of hands, but he's like, you see like the the metal, right? And then I was like, Yeah, what's that black shit? And he's like, That's blood underneath and it's bleeding still, so I need to get this piece out. And then he was like, I'm gonna need you to hold my hands down because this is gonna hurt a whole fucking lot. And then I was like, all right, cool. And then uh, he was like, but first, we're going to get a little God. drunk. So he's got Milwaukee's Beast Ice because it's all that he would drink. Our friends would be like, hey, give me a, give me a fucking a 30 case of this. Give me a bottle of that. It didn't matter what they said. He would always come back with Evan Williams and fucking Milwaukee's Beast Ice. So that's what he was stocked up on was just whatever my idiot friends would tell them. And he was like, fuck you. I'm the grown man, blah, blah, blah. And then he'd come back with Evan Williams. So we were stocked up Evan Williams and that. And he's like, give me the bottle of Evan. We do like fucking two whiskey sours and fucking he's mm. drinking a couple beers and then he was like all right cool i'm good now he's like hold my hand down he gets out the the bottle of iodine which if you've never seen pure iodine it's like black it's like blackish red or whatever it's like a tarry looking shit that you can put in there and it automatically fucking it's like the best shit you could possibly use in your wounds because it immediately sanitizes the wounds and it also burns the worst of anything that you could put into your cuts and wounds <clears throat> it's horrific and uh he took a a fresh uh, exacto knife. He got a fresh blade out, and then uh, just started carving away. And he's got, I mean, good quarter inch <coughs> calluses. That he had to work through to peel that back, and then cut the calluses away before he got to his flesh. Then he opened his flesh up, and then he's just like, he's like, take this earth magnet while you're holding my hand down, and pull this out. And then this fucking gnarly ass, fucking like jagged little fucking piece of like b metal burr comes out. And he's like, that ain't it. There's another one. And then a big ass metal burr comes out, and it's all like it looks like it just came off a lathe. Like I don't know if you've ever seen like when something hits a lathe and it curls yeah. but it looked like that coming out of him but real thin so I pulled oh. two of those out of him 
And it was like straight as I pulled it out. When I pulled it all the way out, I like recurl back up like a spring. And I was like, what the fuck did you do? I don't remember how it happened, but then he was just like, yeah, I got to get the blood out now. And he comes and slices himself. And then like this big pocket of like dried and then fresh blood starts pouring out. And he soaks it up and he's like, all right, now fucking hit the iodine. And he bites his other hand. And he's like, I was like, what do you mean hit the iodine? He's like, you stupid fuck. Open the iodine. You open it up and it's got a little fucking like dropper thing. And he's like, two drops. And then fucking hold my hand down no matter what I do. And I'm like, Scott, you're fucking three times my size. What do you mean, whatever you do? And he's like, I'm going to hold it together, bitch. Just don't let my hand up. And I was like, all right. And then drop it in there. And he's like, it's just like freaking the fuck out. And then he super glued that shit back together. And it was like, all right, you want another whiskey sour? Go call Garrett. I think your uncle wants some Percocets. And I was like, all right, cool. Let's <laughs> How get, old are you? Let's get you? to it. Uh, 15 or 16. That would have fucked me up. If I was any younger hey, than that. Hey, look at how I turned out. I didn't turn out normal. Yeah, I hope my kids don't have to deal with shit like Jesus this. Jesus <laughs> Christ. It wasn't that bad, though. I've seen worse. <clears throat> you got another crazy Damn, story? Man. Uh, I mean, I, I think I, that I, that shit definitely came from my dad. Yeah. Like, he was, I know I've told that story where he puts, like, a staple to his thumb. <clears throat> I mean, for sure broke the bone in his finger or whatever. Just yeah. pulls it out with his teeth, like, hand me electrical tape and napkins. Yeah. That, that was normal. Like, he just... He had a van fall on him when he was under it working on it. Yeah. And he Ooh, wedged No, it. don't just say, yeah. What do you mean a van fell on So him? they had it up on, like, the little ramp things. And the guy he was helping out, who was, like, my mom's friend's husband or whatever, just didn't know anything about any of what they were doing. Yeah. Ever. And he got inside, and he, he bumped the fucking – it had, like, one of those center, center shift things, like one of those old vans. And it rolled down and landed – Oh. literally the bumper on my dad's <laughs> chest and he wedges his arms under and puts it up like pushes it far enough back up the thing to slide out from under it just superman adrenaline's <clears throat> but it? he ripped flesh off of both of his elbows like on the underside because <sighs> he just dug them into the concrete to like wedge his arms up there and mom was like oh fuck we gotta take you to the hospital and blah, blah. he's like fuck it's fine just literally pours booze on it and then took like Billy Bob Thornton and Bad Santa, just yeah. like get, come here, kid, and just dumps like fucking triple sack on it. Yeah, he just he just dumped something on there, and then he. There, I don't think that actually sanitizes, does it? Who Whatever. Knows. Anyways, it but then he just took a pair of socks that was in the van, and he cut the tops of them off and slid them up onto his arms to cover that. <laughs> Kept working. What? The and I'm just. Fuck? I, I remember like looking at my brothers like. So. Like we don't, you don't. I don't get to cry ever again, right? Like no matter what happens, you don't get. Yeah. Like a van fell on him. Yeah. I mean, granted, like I said, he just pushed it back up the ramp a little bit. It's not as crazy as it kind of sounds, but it did. I mean, it literally. Yeah. Ripped the skin off the back of his arms, and it just. Dad, I got raped. Dude, Walk no it way, off, boy. Man. Yeah, he just no reaction. Just all right. Well, that's just what happened today, and then he. See that like my dad w was on some similar vibes as to both of yours, but like I, I never ever growing up ever became Those stories anything my like dad. him like that. Well, I know, I know, but you had family like that. My dad, my dad, like he's got a photo that I love to see. It's a it's a Polaroid of him in a full body cast, like a cartoon character, like locked up, arms on the side, chair one rest with like up. one leg. Oh yeah, holy shit. He uh he like. What, had a walk home from work or something like that, and uh, there was like and this... And Daffy Duck dropped an anvil on no, his No, there was like this railroad <laughs> that had a bridge over some water, right? But the before it got to the water, but there was Road like... Runner painted a black hole over the top. No, he, the one kid from Stand By Me did You're supposed to be yell. training him to not interrupt, man. <laughs> so anyway, I saw choke, choke opportunities. I'm right sorry. below the, uh, the, the railway... Uh, in the water, there was like 15 feet of cement below, and there's like a 30 foot drop cliff, right? My dad, on his way home, would grab one of the old railroad tracks left behind and put his thumb in the hole and then just throw it off and listen to it slam on the concrete or fall into the water if he got far enough. And one day he put his thumb in it and he took it way back to get some more run and thrust. I think I know what's going to happen. And he threw it, and because that extra time his thumb was in there, it swelled up, and he went right over I with knew it. it. Yeah, he got obliterated, dude. He's got a bunch of stories like that. Like, I, my mom... Wait, hold she on, he got me, obliterated, but, so he went down the whole 30-foot yeah, thing? dropped, the broke, like, way. every bone in his body, Did he glove any part of his body? Did he? Does he have any, like, gnarly fucking scars or anything His like right that? hand is brutal, I can tell you that. What does it look like? It's it's just like uh, 
Like you, you know what like a hand looks like from a bunch of uh, uh, tr- what is it? Track scar or yeah, track yeah, marks. Yeah, yeah. Track, track marks. marks. Yeah. It's like his hand is covered with track marks almost. Okay. But um, yeah. There's that. There was like when I was six years old, my mom took me to uh, a, a work site of his that he was on, and he was on the third floor scaffolding, and he's walking parallel across the front of the building, and he's waving at me, and my mom walks right off the fucking edge. Oh, plum is. Like a cartoon. Can yeah, you imagine if crushed. that was the end of your dad? <laughs> you imagine broke, if that was just his demise? He broke uh, three ribs that fall and something else, I think. Oh, he's so lucky. He's. It sounds like it sucks, but he's so lucky. Yeah, my dad has a bunch of catastrophic injuries like that, and I've never, ever been able to emulate any he's sort like of toughness like that. He's like Batman at the end that. of The Dark Knight Rises, and it's just like, yeah, you don't... Uh, yeah, so there's no swelling in the cartilage in your knees. Like, oh, that's good. And it's like, yeah, but the, because there's no cartilage in your knees left. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. my dad doesn't have hair from the bottoms of his knees down. And that's because apparently uh, in his drunk days, him and his friends, uh, like, strapped some bottle rockets to their legs and ran or something. And it caught his <laughs> Trying legs Trying to fly on fire. to the moon. Yeah, it sounds like all shit. of these are very self-inflicted. They all are, yeah. Tons. Like, can you imagine the the cartoonishness of just like waving hi to your family and just like walking off? I like to imagine that like if there was a god, he would allow a Bugs Bunny element of like three steps in the air of him just yeah. like still walking in the air before he was like, oh, oh, like looking up and down like in the air and then falls. I just like, feel like my first thought, like if I was like waving and I walked off a roof, I'd be like, I better die. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't ever want to have this story told again or be Artie Lang's dad you've heard <clears throat> that story before maybe comedian Artie Lang uh so his dad basically uh similar thing to Stanhope's mom wanting to have the the son kill him because Artie Lang's dad used to do like roof repairs and shit like that and all the 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 ladders that he had was shit that he would steal off of other stuff that he got from Jersey trucks and stuff like that and he was on a stolen ladder was the funny part to Artie Lang and uh climbing up it and like doing a roof repair and went backwards on one and then snapped like the I think it's the, I don't know what which vertebrae it is but whichever one makes you a quadriplegic is the one that oh. he fucking broke and then he for years would beg Artie in moments of weakness like please kill me and then he was just like yeah my dad Dad passed away of natural causes, wink, wink, ha, ha. But then after his dad's friend died, he was just like, yeah, my dad had a friend that he knew that uh, basically was just like, come on, man, help me get this done with. And then basically helped him overdose and got him to die because you can die so easily doing jobs like that. Like those fucking yeah. construction jobs. That's yeah. why they pay you $30 an hour because, yeah, it's and good you, night at a certain point. Like you're either going to die, you're going to be horrifically injured, or if dude, you're not... You're gonna have like substantial like injuries for the rest yeah. of your life. My, uh, my uncle, but I, but two of my uncles are electricians, but one of which has suffered two terrible, terrible injuries on the job. Like uh, he went into an attic once, got his uh, cut his head on a rusty knife, got a staph infection. Yeah, of course. And I then mean, he's uh, lucky he didn't get tetanus. And then there was a uh, uh, he was going backwards on a ladder. His legs went through, and he snapped his left uh, knee backwards. Ooh. Yeah. Completely. Oh, God damn. What does that do to your leg getting the healing? Can oh, he walk he was, right? No, not for like two years, basically, no. But still, I'm sure every time it gets cold or whatever the fuck, like... He's he's solid now, but yeah, yeah, it was a catastrophic injury. What was the staph infection like, though? Was that... Do you know anything about it? To, Mm-mm, no. I know that those staph infections I know he's bedridden for a while. They take forever. And that close to your brain, they're so dangerous. Like, when it happens with, like, jujitsu guys and wrestlers and shit like that, I'm sure you can account for this, Lloyd. If dudes will get it in their eye. And it's like, Fuck. that's an immediate, like, travel point to your brain. Like, you're going to fucking die if you don't get that taken. <clears throat> and even if you get it taken care of in the best hospitals in the world, it's like... The fuck do they do? A lot of it turns into MRSA, which is, uh, what is it, medically resistant staphylococcus, uh, whatever the A stands for, yeah. uh, infections. And they literally can't give medicine to it. They just have to do their best to treat it and remove the pus and just hope that it doesn't fucking spread and they can do the most that they can. But yeah. that shit is rough, dude. It digs holes in your body and, like, leaves lasting <clears throat> nerve damage. Like, know, that shit is no fucking joke. I know a guy that has, like, a silver dollar size divot. In one of his pec muscles. <clears throat> he got something from... Uh, was he rolling around? Yeah, he was in like... It was, I think he got a jiu-jitsu or wrestling, one or the other. Adult karate. <clears throat> and uh, he got some kind of infection in the on the skin, and he just thought it was like... Because sh- I guess he shaved his chest for what a lot of fighters did. 
Yeah. And uh, I think he just started off thinking it was like an ingrown hair or something yeah. <clears throat> and just wouldn't. Doesn't get it checked out. Wouldn't do anything about it. And then all of a sudden it started like turning black. Oh. And he's a black dude. Fuck. He's a very dark skinned black dude. So it probably took a while for him to notice that it was turning black. Yeah. And then by the time he got to the hospital, he was in the hospital for like a month and a half. Oh, he had like man. an infection in his fucking bloodstream. They had to put him on like uh, medication to keep his liver from fucking dying. And all, like, he was in there Jesus for like a month and a half Christ. or something. And they literally just cut all of that shit out. They just cut a big thing out and just then had to the treat it. Took the muscle and everything. Well, like out. just a big chunk of it. So like in his pec, like he's a pretty ripped up dude. Right. But in the middle of it, there's just this. It's like a silver dollar size <clears throat> and probably three quarters of an inch deep. Just divot. God, God. Uh, I hate to bring it back to Viva La Bam because it's so corny, but there was a uh, there was one of the episodes where uh, Bam brings Don Vito to Vegas, and he's just like, yeah, fucking, if Don Vito's getting a free ride to Vegas, he's getting a fucking him tattoo on the divot in his back. And then it was like, divot in his back? What are they talking about? Oh, they yeah. lift up his back. He has a softball size fucking, like, just yeah. in the middle of his spine, a divot. And it was like, what is this crater so from? Gross. And Don Vito's got one eye just spinning around in one <laughs> circle, and then one eye kind of looking at you. And shit like a that. wonk eye. Yeah, he's actually fucked up because he had severe alcoholism and, like, it ruined his eye. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, it was like, what's that from? And he was like, I've, yeah, I got hit by a, a softball bat when I was a kid. And I was like, by who? The Italian mafia? <laughs> like, not one time from a kid your size. Like, even a dude your size. Like, yeah. this is multiple fucking strikings. And the fact that you're not paralyzed is fucking remarkable. It's literally a crater in his back. It looks like fucking... It's gross. Yeah, it looks like a, a test a test atomic n- uh, nuclear bombing site in Nevada or something like someone like that. took the middle a of his... scoop out of him to make a Don Vito yeah, clone. Dude. And they had to make sure they took enough flesh so they yeah. didn't have to come back for more. Those are the people that they're scoop They're melon balling flesh away from the, <laughs> to grow new fucking people. Don Vita, the, the pinnacle of human being. The, the pinnacle of... <laughs> of uh, I don't, I don't know. What I never watched any of those because I, I always found Bam just... Insufferably retarded to Which is also to. just... I don't know, dull. Like, yeah. to me, it was always like... <clears throat> Well, uh, well, I, as someone who's like Cody, I can explain our attraction to it. See, we were both dark clothes wearing motherfuckers that skated, and that's exactly what he was. And we also liked attention being loud and like potentially dangerous things, which is all he was ever right, right. about. I get, we're not getting enough attention. I get this gets, yeah. like the pinnacle of attention gettery. And, we like, need to start doing shit. things he's doing so we can get that kind of attention. Well, no, I would like, literally I'm not film that, videos I'm, like dumbass. I called it dumbass. It was the most rip-off shit at 14. I was impersonating Bam. It's the most... Oh my god, I gotta bring it to the podcast someday. If I can oh, I'd love to rip watch it, that. Up. it's so embarrassing. I was literally just like, he shit his ass! And I would throw my head back. I was doing shitty Bam impressions at 14. Anyways, <laughs> but uh, no, I get the appeal. Like a lot of my friends were like, I had like all the CKY two K tapes and shit. Yeah, like I just always found Bam himself. I'm like, eh, like I don't, I don't, I just didn't get. Like I loved all the Jackass stuff, uh, right. all kinds of skate videos and shit. Even though I couldn't skateboard because my feet are too fucking big, that they just hang off both sides of a fucking skateboard. <clears throat> so the balance was always rough being six and a half feet fucking tall with a size 16 you're just like yeah i'm not skating it's not so much exactly about bam bam is just like the -the over-the-top personality that's easiest to make fun of and gravitate towards because the show's about him but it's more so about like what he cultivated with all the people like all these friends of his that were just nobodies and still are no but like raykeon is nobody like he didn't even want to be there half the time he's having watermelons dropped on his head and he's just like you fucking assholes like he's fucking out of here real scientist now apparently well he already he was back then he just i don't know and then brandon DiCamillo doesn't even do any of this shit he doesn't even want to be associated uh, with it rob himself like rab, <laughs> rab on his podcast has said dico is just a family man That's yeah, yeah all yeah. he wants to do he, he has also no, in, in, like you know what else dico did he has or uh brandon uh DiCamillo did this motherfucker freestyle no for real he had for a while in 2000 and like 
think it was like 12 or something like that. He got the Mortal Kombat MK1 or 2 on Sega Genesis on an arcade machine. World record for highest like score. It was what immediately the fuck? it was immediately beat by some Chinese kid right. that would be, that had been groomed since he was fucking 3 years old <laughs> to just play MK2 and beat any white dude that could do that. And fucking it was immediately beat, but he did for like 8 seconds have that that trophy and that was the last like notable thing that he did, just, which is <clears throat> shitty because it's hilarious. Dico- like, was one it's of the- only notable if you actually go out there and like whore yourself to MTV and yeah. fucking do dumb shit. That's the only way that you're notable. And now he's being a family man, doing shit of actual worth of to an actual like on a community level and on a family man level, and like nobody respects that. And it's like, oh, that dude fell off the earth. Like he was no, he one didn't. of the best. Characters. Probably doing fantastic. He's probably doing way better than Bam's doing right now. Or he, any oh, of these he fucking is. Guys. Everyone's doing better than Bam. Dude, rap like Deco, hands oh, down. Deco hands down was like my favorite part of the show. Oh, he was like, hilarious. He was he was he would have like those weird characters with like the costumes and stuff. Like he's got like uh like the scientist like lab coat on yeah. and he's got like no hair but the hair that he does have he's got like sprawled all over the place <laughs> and like the best parts about him would be like the the scene change moments where everyone is like recording the scene or doing something but Deco's like in the background just being weird just like messing around he was like no like no one's paying attention to yeah. him but he's like I'm being weird in case the camera got like he's the me. funniest dude there for sure like yeah. do you remember the episode where it's just like don't feed Phil the don't feed Phil episode oh, for 24 yeah. hours when Phil is just like, where the fuck is everything at? He opens up the fridge. There's nothing in there. And then he opens up the, the cupboard. And also, all this shit for sure staged... I don't give a fuck that it's staged. They did a better job staging all this than they've done for most of reality television for my dumb brain and the nostalgia factor <clears> to <throat> it maybe plays into it a little bit, but it worked for me. I knew it was staged and they even addressed it sometimes where Bam was just like, yeah, fuck it, rehearse that. Did that sound good? And they left it in where they they all know that they're in on it. <clears throat> yeah. They're still really doing this shit and harming themselves for MTV, but they, yeah. when he, when Phil opens up the thing and then there's just like a fucking TV in there and it's Deco and, and like they cut cuts to like a, a thing and he's just like I bet you could eat right now Phil I can eat whatever I want because I'm in the land of television and there's like food all over him and he takes a big old two finger thing of cheesecake and he's oh, just like, yeah. oh. And he's yeah. like I bet you'd love this chicken right now and he spreads his legs and he's just like uh, uh, and he just like rips it apart just being ridiculous yeah. like and Deco also did that with CKY like the original like camp kill yourself videos yeah. and shit like that dude uh, uh I, I I think you would really like if you haven't been watching like the rab podcast and the steve ones where he has people from oh yeah definitely this, uh, danger like, aaron and yeah i've listened dude, all the this. danger aaron episode was was super uh, eye-opening because like i always suspected but it confirmed that he was like for sure the most bullied dude on the entire show danger <laughs> aaron was killing himself let's finish this conversation <laughs> on the patreon of uh, I hate to interrupt it right there. If you guys, but uh, like, just if you guys want to hear this conversation, continue going on. Go to the Bastard Sermon Patreon, www.patreon.com slash the Bastard Sermon. It's in my uh, bio link, and it's, uh, yeah, you'll find it. Uh, this episode is all episodes is sponsored by the amazing, the talented, the incredible, the long dick wizard, Anthony Tank Mansfield. Check him out at neiltonoone.com or his Instagram page at neiltonoone. I'm not going to spell it anymore. Fuck you guys. Uh, he's got like super dope glassware that you can go and check out a hop Thulu glass and like, it's this like slime green that looks super dope. I, I've had all these glasses for years that he's put out and like none of them even with all my drunkenness I've never broken them not a testament to his glasses just to some miracle of fucking drunken Jesus that I haven't broken them but none of them have ever faded as I've washed them and I have so many glasses that all the things just come off of and like the decals just fade yeah. none are on any of these same with the t-shirts he's an amazing artist if you want to hit him up $30 designs uh, all starting of off for slaps and you can commission him for anything else that you want starting at 30 fucking love that dude check him out also uh, before you get into the other one we keep forgetting to plug this, and uh, he's not a paid sponsor. He's just the old post of the Bastard Sermon. Patrick Seda, go and check out Dark Mountain Colt on Instagram. He does all these awesome-ass fucking, like, illustrations that he's doing on his fucking... Uh, just Got Prince. Yeah, Just Got Prince, doing all these dope-ass fucking illustrations for t-shirts, tattoo designs, like, doing these, like... He'll do, like, Pokemon shit, but make it, like, a dark, brutal version of Pokemon where Bulbasaur is murdering two Parasect people. Parasect is, like, murdering this girl. Yeah, dude, it's uh, so in the sick. latest one, it's brutal, yeah. Parasect is scary. I love Patrick to death. Uh, just because Lloyd's here replacing him doesn't mean that we don't have... Uh, 
all the reverence and respect and love for Patrick, please go and check him out. And he's offered to pay us for this spot. And fuck that, Patrick. I'm giving you a spot for free every single fucking time out of loyalty and respect. We love you. Please go and check him out. Go ahead and take it over. We're also sponsored by Scarlet Vape and Smoke Shop. If you guys want uh, the best, you know, glassware for your smoke needs, you guys need to go to Scarlet Vape and Smoke Shop. I'm not playing around. <laughs> the quality, the best kind of glassware for the uh, best price. You can't beat it. Uh, they they deliberately, if you guys go back to the episode we had them on, they talk about how they outsource and, and beat any other smoke store with prices. Uh, they, they you know they they have a way to get these things cheaper for them. And they upsell you at the store, but not Scarlet Vape and Smoke Shop. So if you want to get a sweet water pipe or a bowl, or perhaps you fuck around with Kratom, maybe that helps you sleep or something. Uh, or Delta 8. They have Delta 8 products there. It's sort of legal. It is it is legal, marijuana, uh, It's but it's different. Uh, <laughs> they got carts and nugs there. They've got everything. Uh, so go check out Scarlet Vape and Smoke Shop. They have two locations, one at 937 Mama Street, Newport, Kentucky, 41071, and 11424 Montgomery Road, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45249. And let them know you're a bastard, and you'll get 15% off your order. 15. I said 15. I thought you said 50. Sorry. All right, that's the podcast. If you want to hear the rest of what he has to say about Deco, tune into the Patreon. Wait, Lloyd, you got anything you want to shout out? Uh, fuck you, we like the Bengals. Check it out. It's a great podcast. They don't just talk about the Bengals, but they do. But it's also fun to just listen to them riff <coughs> and talk shit. Hey, yeah, it's a lot of roast jokes. It's, it's fucking it's awesome. It's fun. And you've got actual comedians on there. Like, Lloyd's not a comedian, but he should have been. And he's hilarious. Alex Schubert's on there. He is a comedian, and he's fucking hilarious. I can attest to it. I've listened to several episodes. Please go check that shit out. All right, for the rest of what uh, Luke was just about to say about Deco, tune into the Patreon. Goodbye, bitches.